All right, Karina Baby for July the 6th. Look at the doggies and the doctor. Dr. Dog on vacation. Dr. Dog arrived at the office one morning looking very tired. You need a vacation, says Nurse Kitty. Dr. Dog thinks Nurse Kitty is right. He packs his bags right away for a vacation in the mountains. Long walks and lots of fresh air will do me good, he says. Nurse Kitty waves goodbye. I'll look after all your patients while you're away, she says. Dr. Dog, Dr. Dog drives his car to the mountains. Then he parks and goes for a walk. He hasn't gone far when he hears a terrible moaning noise. It's coming from the forest. Ow! Ooh! Ow! A grizzly bear has been stung on the nose by a bee. It was very painful. Dr. Dog stops to help. It was a good thing he brought his first aid kit, he says, and puts some ointment on the bear's sore nose. Thank you, says the bear. My nose feels much better. Dr. Dog walks in, and in a little while, he meets a wolf. The wolf is howling at the top of his voice. Yeah, howls he howls i've got a toothache oh dear says dr dog let me see what i can do dr dog pulls the tooth out and the wolf grins happily thank you he says i feel much better at the top of the mountain dr dog sits down to rest suddenly an eagle swoops down screeching loudly caw 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 cries the eagle i've hurt my leg dr dog examines the leg carefully and bandages it up Thank you, says the eagle. My leg feels much better already. When Dr. Dog's busy vacation is over, he goes back into the office. He finds Nurse Kitty relaxing in a chair. Did you have many patients? asks Dr. Dog. No, says Nurse Kitty. I think they all went on vacation. Yes, says Dr. Dog's. They were all in the mountains with me. Oh my. So Dr. Dog wanted to go on a vacation. So he could relax and do nothing, right? He just wanted to relax and take a walk and get the fresh mountain air. And I absolutely get it because it's beautiful out here. And uh, so he takes a walk in the mountains and everyone needs his help. And Nurse Kitty is the one who's sitting in the office and nice air conditioning, just ah, relaxing on her vacation from Dr. Dog. All right, so let's see what the next story is from this one. I really like that one with my aunts. All right, the next one is the half chick. There was once upon a time a handsome black Spanish hen. He had a large brood of chicks, of chickens. Then they were all fine and plump little birds, except the youngest, who was quite unlike his brothers and sisters. This one looked just as if it had been cut into two. He had only one leg and one wing and he had one eye and had half of his head and half of his beak his mother shook her head sadly as she looked at him and said my youngest born is only a half chick he can never grow up a tall and handsome cock like his brothers they will go out into the world and rule over poultry yards of their own but this poor little fellow will always have to stay at home with his mother and she called him Medity Pedity. Oh, Medid Medio Medio Politio Medio M E D I O Medio P O L L I T O Politio, which is Spanish for half chick. Now thought Medio was such an odd helpless looking little thing his mother soon found he was not at all willing to remain under her wing of protection indeed in character he was unlike his brothers and sisters and he was as he was in appearance they were good obedient chickens and what when when the old hen called them they chirped and ran back to her side the medio had a writhing spirit in spirit he had in spite of his one leg when his mother called him to return to the coop he pretended he could not hear her because he only had one ear when she told the whole family out took the whole family out for a walk in the field medio would hop away by himself hiding among the indian corn 
many an anxious moment for his brothers and sisters had looking for him while his mother ran to and fro cacking for fear and dismay as he grew older he became more self-willing and disobedient his manner of his mother was often rude and ill in temper to the other chicks and disagreeable one day he had been out for a long expedition than usually in the fields on his return he shut it up to his mother with a particular little hop and a kick which was his way of walking and cocking his eye at her in a very bold way he said mother i am tired of this life in a dull farmyard with nothing but a dreamy um maize field to look at i'm off to madrid to see the king to madrid medio explained his mother why you silly chick it will be a long journey for a grown-up uh, rooster a poor little thing like you would be tired out before you had gone half the distance no no stay at home with your mother and stay at mother and someday when you are bigger we will go on a little journey together but medio had made up his mind he would not listen to his mother's advice nor to the prayers and entries of his brothers and sisters what is the use of our crowding each other in a pokey little place he said when i have a fine courtyard of my own in the, at to the king's at the king's palace i should perhaps ask some of you to come and play me a short visit and scantly wanting to say goodbye to his family away he stomped down the road and led to madrid but sure you are kind and civil to everyone you meet be sure you are kind and civil to everyone you meet called his, his mother running after him but he was in such a hurry to be off he did not wait to answer her or even to look back a little later in the day he was talking taking a short cut through the field he passed a stream now the stream was choked and overgrown with weeds and water plants so its waters could not flow freely oh medio it called as the half chick hopped along the banks do come and help me by clearing away the weeds help you indeed exclaimed medio tossing his head and shaking the few feathers on his tail do you think i have nothing to do but waste my time on such trifles trifles help yourself and don't trouble busy travelers i am off to madrid to see the king a hippity kick and a pokety kick away stump stumped medio a little later he came to a fire that had been lit by a gypsy in the wood it was burning very low and would soon be out oh medio cried the fire in a weak wavering voice as the half chick approached in a few moments in a few minutes i shall go quite out unless you put some sticks and dry leaves upon me do help me or i shall die help you indeed answered medio i have other things to do gather sticks for yourself and don't trouble me i am off to madrid to see the king and hippity kick and a hippity kick away stumped medio the next morning as he was nearing madrid he passed a large chestnut tree in whose branches the wind was caught and entangled oh medio called the wind do hop up here and help me get free of these branches i cannot come away and it is so uncomfortable it is your own fault for going there answered medio i cannot waste all my mornings stopping here to help you just shake yourself off and don't hinder me for i'm off to madrid to see the king and a hippity hop and a hippity kick and a hippity kick away stomped medio in great glee for the towers and roofs of madrid were now in sight 
When he entered the town, he saw before him a great splendid house with soldiers standing before the gates. This he knew must be the royal palace, and he determined to hop up to the front gate and wait there until the king went out. But as he was hopping past one of the back windows, the king cook saw him. He is a very thing I want, he exclaimed, for the king has just sent a message that he must have chicken broth for his dinner. And opening the window, he stretched out his arm, caught Medio, and plopped him into the broth pot, standing near the fire. Oh, how wet and clumsy the water felt as he went over Medio's head, making his feathers cling to his sides. Water, water, he cried out in his despair. Do have pity upon me and do not wet me like this. Oh, Medio, replied the water, you would not help me when I was little, when I was a little stream away in the fields, and now you must be punished. Then the fire began to burn and scold Medio. He hopped from one side of the pot to the other, trying to get away from the heat, and cried out in pain, Fire, fire, do not scorch me like this. You cannot think of how it hurts. Ah, Medio, answered the fire, you would not help me when I was dying in the woods. You are being punished. At last, just when the pain was so great, Medio thought he must die. The cook lifted up the lid of the pot to see if the broth was ready for the king's dinner. Look here, he cried in horror. This chicken is quite useless. It is burned to a cinder. I can't send it up to the royal table. And opening the window, he threw Medio out into the street. But the wind caught him up and whirled him through the air so quickly, Medio could scantly breathe, and his heart beat against his side till he thought it would break. Oh, when he gasped out, if you hurry me along like this, you will kill me. Don't let me rest a moment. Do let me rest a moment, or... But he was so breathless, he could not finish his sentence. Ah, Medio, replied the wind. When I was caught in the branches of the chestnut tree, you would not help me. Now you are punished. And he swirled Medio over the roofs and the houses till they reached the highest church of the town. And there he let him, left him fast into the top of the steeple. And there stands Medio to this day. If you go to Madrid and walk through the streets, you will come to the highest church. You will see Medio perched on his one leg of the steeple and his one wing drooping to the side and gazing sadly out with his one eye over the town. Medio wasn't very nice to anybody, now was he? He really, really wasn't, so everyone punished him and taught him a lesson. Always be nice to everyone that you meet. I don't care if you like that person or not. I don't care if that person's nice to you or not. People who are hurt, hurt other people. And just know that no matter how much that person who's hurt tries to hurt you, they're hurting that much more themselves. Always show love. Always. I don't care who it's to. I don't care. I don't care. Make sure people around you feel seen and feel loved and feel accepted. It's the most important thing in the world. Our lives are too short to be bitter towards, ev towards anyone. Ever. My father used to always say it. Never let your situation make you bitter. Just stay sweet all the days of your life. Let's do... We sit and watch the rain As it falls from the sky And we are glad to be inside Where it is warm and dry Oh yes, I do love the rain it keeps the earth so clean and helps the pretty flowers grow from the mountains to the streams. Karina baby, your mama loves you no matter what anyone says to you. Your mama loves you. I will always love you. I'll be back.